Hey there everyone and welcome to episode 3. Today we are going to be burning the miles again as we travel pretty well to the Western Australian border for our first game today in round 7 of the competition and we'll be playing Kaltakajara. Try and say that 5 times fast. And before we come back to a home game against Cox Peninsula. So the journey to Kaltakajara is a mere 2,388 kilometres and According to Google Maps, it's going to take us 35 hours to get there. So that should be a lot of fun. A lot of bonding time in the bus as we drive the dirt roads right the way down there. Before we come back to Cox Peninsula a little bit later on. Our recent results have been very encouraging. Seeing a lot of goals scored and unfortunately quite a few conceded as well. So we probably do need to look at the attacking tactic and maybe tweak that a little. So we beat Darwin Throb 3-2 in round 3. Round 4 was a very convincing 4-0 win over Uni Azuri who we've already played and beaten in the Coca-Cola Cup. It was a big win in the Coca-Cola Cup next round against Whaler Wanderers winning that 7-1. Before round 5 beating Darwin City 6-3. And then our last game against Howard Spring Hope. Unfortunately, we eradicated their hope very quickly in that game. And it was a 7-3 victory. So let's get into today's games. So our formation for today, we still have the 4-2-3-1 happening with Dick Splash up front. Nikos Giorgio starting there. Leo Keating is back in the side after being dropped originally because of his send-off. He's managed to make his way back into first grade after being relegated to reserves pretty well as a punishment. Anyway, it's Ferrara on the attack for Calcutta Jara. Uh, I don't know how well I'm going to go saying that name. And they are on the board. Morrison has scored a goal within the two-minute mark. It is 1-0, so Huntley do have a bit of a mountain to climb there as once again we're on the dirt, as you can see. Good ball there from McCann, push it through there to Morrison and he brings the ball down and Dick Meister is beaten very easily. It's a bit of a disappointing start for the boys, so it'd be very interesting to see how they react to that. Dick Splash is wearing the armband today as well, so a bit of extra, extra pressure on him today to perform. As we have a corner there is Kerr there, crossing it in, but it is defended well. Although Dixon Balls goes back to retrieve the ball, Banks puts the ball forward. It's out to Zas who crosses it in, and it is Kerr who gets the equaliser. 1-1 one, one in the 13th minute. But once again we see Banks put the ball through there, and it is badly defended there by McCann. He probably had a bit more time than he thought there. And then Zas's cross to Kerr. And Kerr buries the ball in the net. So 1-1. One, one. The boys will be a lot happier with that. As we have a corner now. It is Kerr crossing it in there. And it is Zars putting the ball back out to Kerr. He, he moves in. And the keeper manages to collect the ball. So well done to Simpson there. Good, good save there. So Banks throws in now to Dixon Balls. Who puts the ball through to Zars. Who's been easily dispossessed there. And Kalka Yajara try and go on the attack, although it is Zars who puts the ball in the net. So very good recovery and change up there. So 2-1. We're just seeing there that Giorgio does well to intercept the ball there. Dixon Balls puts the th ball through to Zars, who manages to bury the ball in the net without any problem whatsoever. Very quick thinking there. And very good to see the team turn defense into attack very quickly. And we've actually put ourselves back on top of the competition there temporarily maybe but that's a good sign and Simpson has all sorts of trouble at the back there and pushes the ball back for a corner so Kerr now ready to cross it in and it goes but it's safely defended and Simpson has the ball for Kalkajara it is a tough word to say that one as Dick Meister plays out from the back to Keating Giorgio is going down the right hand side there. Kerr again who's been in everything today so far. And Giorgio back again is crossing in and the ball has been headed over the top there. But again they're creating opportunities down the right hand side. Uh, 12 shots to 3 currently which is pretty encouraging. After a pretty shocking start really that early goal set us back a little bit. But uh, yeah we're doing quite well now. Hope you do 2-1 in front there as Dixon Balls makes a run. And it is to Giorgio again. Holds the ball up before trying to thread the needle. He's done that to Splash. And there's Kerr and Dixon Balls 
will get the goal. So 3-1. So three unanswered goals here in the 42nd minute. So I'm sure Kauta Pajara would be really looking forward to getting to half time. Clinical finish from Dixon Balls, but once again that man Kerr. Wayne Kerr, what a player. He's actually been very strong. As you can see, he's got a goal and an assist now. He's on an 8.6 at the moment as we hit half time. 15 shots to fall. Very comfortable at the moment after a bad start as we hit the second half. Giorgio throws it in there and it's flea balls now back to Giorgio. Tries to cross it in, but it is defended quite well there. And it's pushed forward by Calcutajara as they do it again. I've got to stop saying that because it's actually uh, <laughs> it's actually very hard to say. As Green crosses in and it's well defended there. Although I think we may have given away a penalty there. Yep, Flea Balls has given the penalty away. So we're actually keeping them back in the game there. As Green puts the ball away very, very easily. Dick Meister goes the wrong way. So great goal from Moses Green. And it is 3-2 now, so they are still in it. The K-Boys, I call them the K-Boys, I reckon. It's just easier to say. Uh, so we're going to make a bit of a change. You've got to bring Bannerman on for Robin Banks, who was on a yellow there. Again, normally a right defender, but he's capable on the left. And he will also take the armband. As Giorgio throws into Dixon Balls, puts the ball through, and it's Risa at the back for the K-Boys. And he puts it through there. And Green again looking to equalise. He, oh, he, he probably could have done a bit better there, but Dick Meister was up to the challenge that time. Giorgio throwing in again to Dixon Balls there, and back to Giorgio. And there's Keating again. He's been pretty solid today. And Banks puts it through there, but there is nothing happening there. Simpson saves the ball with ease before putting it down the middle to, to go route one. But it is actually quite easily defended. Still on the attack there for the K-Boys, and he just threads the needle there, but there's uh, just a bit of backwards and forwards at the moment. Doesn't seem to be too much happening there. Although they've got a beautiful chance here, and oh man, Dick Meister has just got a hand to that. I think K-Boys will be very disappointed there. That was an excellent opportunity to equalize. So Bannerman puts the ball through to Zars, and Bannerman again. Um, but his pass is intercepted there. Kalkajara haven't cleared it, and it is Kerr again who has his second goal of the day. So 4-2 now. So just a bit of breathing space now for the boys. So Bannerman again does well. Remembering he's normally on the right-hand side, so he's playing on the left there. Poor clearance there. Let's flea balls get the interception, and Kerr puts the ball in the back of the net. So just a bit of breathing space now for the boys. Okay, just got to make another change now as we look to give Wayne Kerr a rest. Although, I don't know, I think I want to keep him on because he's been so good. So I think we'll bring Bill Wilkins on for Harry Dixon Balls instead. And give the big man a go. And it is Zars crossing it in, but it is well defended there. There's Wilkins there, the, the blonde hair there. Keating to Giorgio, and there's Kerr again, crossing in, and it is actually well saved there by Simpson, although Stick Splash was offside, so no harm, no foul there. As Palmerston Panthers go ahead on the table through goal difference, and Bartler crosses it in for the K-Boys. They've actually scored a goal to bring it within one again, so 4-3 with just over 10 minutes of real time to play there. So the, the K-Boys are not going away, and we are looking to make our last change there. And it looks like Rick Astley is going to come on for Beans. So hopefully that'll just bolster our defence a little bit. We've been a bit leaky there, 4-3. After being quite comfortable there at 3-1 at one point, we've really let these guys back in the game as Newcomb is pushing forward. Crosses it across, but it's well intercepted by Scammer there, and Zars is on the attack there. Puts the ball through to Splash, and Splash just gives a bit more breathing space. Although, 
He's been called back for offside. We have got the win, 4-3, but yeah, a little bit disappointing there. And yes, we're in second spot there now. Of course, the Palmerston Panthers have a better for and against. And uh, Leo Keating is still holding a bit of resentment there for his sacking. So he might actually be causing us a few problems in the dressing room for all I know. Just got to keep an eye on that because unhappy players at clubs can cause a lot of damage as we prepare for the Cox uh, Peninsula game. So, Cox Peninsula now. Let's see how we go. At least it's a home game. So the boys are back after driving a hell of a long way. Very sort of dreary affair at the moment. Only one shot after 12 minutes. So I don't know what's happening with the boys there. Uh, Dick Splash once again wearing the armband, but hasn't started that well. Giorgio seems to be doing okay. Pretty well nothing happening at the in the first half, so very disappointing. We should be better because uh, Cox Peninsula are only mid-table, so we should be doing a little bit better than this. So five shots to four now, so we're, we're not even got much of a an advantage there. But it looks like uh, Cox Peninsula have a player down. But it's Beans on the attack now, but he's been, uh, flea balls have been dispossessed there and they've put it forward, but Fisher is up to the challenge there. Fisher being brought in today because Stickmeister was a little bit uh, disappointing last game. It looks like Scammer might have picked up a knock as well. Farts puts the ball through there, but Jones from Cox Peninsula intercepts and they immediately put it down field. Flea balls trying to find Zars, has done that effectively and Splash has put the ball in the back of the net. So a very important goal just before half time. It's 1-0. So Beans brings the ball down very effortlessly there and flea balls with the money ball to Zars who manages to beat his opponent senseless there and splash with the volley there. Puts the ball straight in the net. 1-0. Now hopefully that can spark the boys to actually get into gear because they've been a little bit misfiring today. So but it's Cox Peninsula that are pushing the ball forward. There's Barton with a good chip across. And he's got Dylan Curry. And it looks like that goal will stand. I thought he may have been offside there, but no. There is no flag, and it is 1-1. So a brilliant equaliser just before half time. Very good time to be scoring your goals. Not good for us, of course, as McLaughlin puts it out from, from the back for Cox Peninsula. And they're pushing it forward again, but Keating is back there to save the day. Flea Balls pushes it out to Kerr, who had such a great game last game. Crosses it in, but can't find his man. As Cox Peninsula push forward there, there's Barton again. Dispossessed there. Scammer's still got that knock. We probably need to look at that. As McLaughlin puts it out for Cox Peninsula and Scammer again. Still doing quite well there, despite the injury. And Splash has... Put the ball in the back of the net, although yeah, I had a suspicion that he was offside. So, but again, Scammer holding the ball up nicely, but yeah, clearly not just Splash, but I think Kerr in the right hand side was off as well. As we hit half time, and Scammer will come off. So, Wilkins is actually going to go into the midfield today because we didn't have anyone else on the bench. So, interesting that. I'm sure he'll be up for the task though. We're going to give Nick Doff a go as well. So we'll change the formation slightly just to try and change it up. Push two attackers forward. So we've got no attacking midfielder now. And we'll see how we go with that. Bill Wilkins is still playing in the midfield. So out of position technically. But I'm sure he'll be capable enough to play that role. So shot clock is looking a little bit better. 11 to 5. Uh, and XG is a little bit more comfortable too. Although we are wanting to take advantage of these opportunities so it is Beans who's back there to recover puts it through to flea balls back to Keating and Beans again as he pushes that ball through there's flea balls pushing the ball to Zars Zars gets the ball and it is Doff gets his fourth goal of the season so it's 2-1 hopefully that can actually open the floodgates and the boys can actually push away from this because they have been a little bit flat today 58th minute so there's still plenty of time for either things to happen whether they pull away or whether Cox Peninsula are able to get an equaliser. So McLaughlin from the back for Cox Peninsula and it's gone to Doff again he pushes it out to Kerr again Kerr probably could have done a bit better there pulled the trigger a little early I think and that sort of meant that the ball sailed harmlessly over the top 
There's Keating pushing the ball forward again. And, oh, that's great defense there by that, that man. Who was that? Just making a change now. So Kuiper is going to come on for Kerr, who was a Mets last game. and just looking a little bit tired on it. There's Beans there. And then Farts pushing it forward to Splash, although it hasn't got him easily, but Wilkins has done all right there. So Kenzaska there first. He has managed to recover the ball first. So still 2-1 here. Keating at the back. And there we are pushing, but I think those boys are offside. So once again, we're blowing opportunities here, and hopefully it doesn't come and bite us on the ass because that was not good. You got guys loitering within 10 up there, both Splash and Nick Dog, both in front of the defenders there. So need to be watching, need to be war watchful over that, I think. As Curry prepares to cross the ball in for Cox Peninsula, and they've just gone wide with their attempt of header. So not a, not a bad effort from them, and they're not going away either. So they're, they're, there's a lot of competition happening there. About 10 minutes of time to go, including injury time there. There we go. And today, oh dear. I mean, that was a Stormtrooper rating too, but I'm not going to put that one in because that was the opposition, wasn't it? So, okay, well, hopefully we'll be home. We've only got a couple of minutes left. As uh, Georgia with the throw, and oh, they've been dispossessed. And it is, oh, it's backwards and forwards at the moment, but it looks like Cox Peninsula have control of all this Coke bottle. But he's been intercepted by Farts, and there's Splash. And once again, the boys got to watch their onside there, even though it didn't matter in that case. There's Barton, and he is pushing the ball through. There's Giorgio, and he's been red carded. What has he done? I cannot believe that. They're, I can't see. I can't see what he's done there. So checking the replay, he's gone up there. Seem to be some sort of noise there on the effects mic. Let's see if we can get that louder. Oh man, he's dropped his guts. I can't believe that'd be the reason why he sent off. Let's see it in slow motion. He's gone up. He hasn't laid a hand on the bloke there, so it has to be the fart. I've never seen someone sent off for a fart before. So you've seen it here first. Oh, you're kidding me. Yep, so we're down to 10. I mean, it shouldn't matter because we're that close, but they've got a free kick. It's been oh, knocked over the bar, so they're going to go again. And we're going to watch this again because I, I, I'm, I'm gobsmacked about what's actually happened here. Okay, so what have we got here? Now they've given a penalty away. I, I, I don't know what's going on. It's almost like this ref has been bought off. So pretty well the last kick of the game, I would suggest. And Fisher's not up to the task, so it's going to be too all, I think. Yeah, very, very disappointing. I have no idea. Well, firstly, why we had to send off and then the penalty, so we might have to go and have a look at that later. So very disappointing uh, to only get the one point out of that game. We were in charge of it for the majority, but it does serve us right because we were unable to put the ball in the net. So anyway, disappointing way to end episode three, but... We are still on top of the table, albeit with uh, a game over the rest of the field there. So we'll see you next time for episode four. Thanks for joining us.